Welcome to all Caribbean entrepreneurs. If you've been ready and waiting to take your business digital and get paid online while you sip something strong on the beach, this podcast is for you. We'll hear from the Caribbean's finest entrepreneurs on topics like e-commerce, business development, brand building, social media, their wins and failures. This is the only place in the region helping you navigate the digital age from the Caribbean's perspective. This is Digipreneur FM. And now, let's give it up for the Digiboss himself, Mr. Karan Rose. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody tuning in to another episode of the Digipreneur FM podcast. And as usual, it is your boy, it is your boy, Mr. Karan Rose. DJ. <laughs> DJ fade us all, DJ fade us all the way, y'all. Let's talk to the people. We got to talk to the people, DJ. <laughs> oh boy, how is everybody doing today? I hope you had a wonderful weekend. It is May 23rd, Monday, May 23rd, 2022. And we are getting into episode number 73. And boy, that is so dope. That is so dope. I mean, every, every single time, you know, we jump on, we jump on the podcast to, to deliver a new, you know, audio masterclass or we just have some fun or we're interviewing people. I always find that it's, it's just so, it's humbling. It's fun. I'm blessed to be able to be in a position, you know, to do this where, you know, the, these are the things I get to do. I get to do full time. So I have a lot of fun. Every single time that I get to do this, you know? So, today's episode, today's episode, I wanted to kind of touch on an idea that no matter what you are doing, whatever industry, whatever space you are in, Society forgets the people who play in the middle. The people who ride the fence, the people who, you know, you know don't want to put their opinion out there and, or, or don't want to double down on the things that they believe in, that is who society forgets. And that is who stays in the middle of the pack and that is who doesn't stand out in their respective space. Now, this is one of those episodes where I didn't, ha- I didn't, I didn't plan for this. I had actually wrote down my points to do something else. And while I was eating some breakfast and I, I just, I think a lot of things have kind of happened and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it. I think a lot, of, a lot of things have happened over this last week. And I think I'm getting into that space now for, for, for myself and in my own brand and what I do where I'm starting, to re, I'm starting to see, you know, people are going to, to love you or hate you based on your opinion and how you come across, you know, in your business and whatnot. And it's... it's, it's now you're, you're you're probably listening to me say that, and you're like, "Well, duh," because I mean that that's just what it is in general. Like it doesn't matter what aspect of your life, all right? But I think because business isn't personal, and we know that business isn't personal, all right? Because business isn't personal, you do your do. You know, whoever wants to do business with you, they do business with you, um, and you don't really take it too personal in business. But when you are in a space where you are building your personal brand or you have an approach to how you to how you do things and you are a content creator, right? You're a business content creator and you're putting your thoughts and your views out there as to how you approach stuff, or whatever um, you do offer yourself up to be critiqued and criticized and whatnot. And again, people are either going to love you or hate you. Um but I've started to realize that, you know what, this year, 2022 for me was a year where I said to myself that 
I need to put myself, I, I need to push my own self a bit more. And I also need to, you know, look at the industry that, I, that, I'm, that I'm playing in. The industry I'm playing in is, is, the, is the marketing and e-commerce space, the digital business, the digital entrepreneurship space in the Caribbean. And I'm seeing a lot of good stuff. But all we ever do in the Caribbean is talk about the good stuff. It's, a, it's, a, it's very interesting, you know. Because when you're not speaking to the business community, so if you go on Facebook or you go on, you know, man, it doesn't even matter the platform. You go on any platform, you know, the business community tends to stay out of any type of of drama unless it's like, you know, like real serious stuff. (laughs) Like we're talking like investigation type of stuff. But on on a regular basis, we, we don't really do any kind of drama in the business community. However, we... I had seen a post, and let me see if I can pull it up, right? And I guess this is what kind of sparked, you know, my own train of thought this morning because I was was kind of reflecting on it when I seen it. I'm just going to pull it up real quick. Let me grab it. I seen it over on LinkedIn. Hold on. So it was a post um, by this guy named Martin P on LinkedIn, right? He's not not from the Caribbean, but, I mean, it, it, it applies. And, again, it got me thinking. I guess that's where... You know, my mind went today, this morning. But his post said, LinkedIn is in dire need for fresh blood. Whole feed. The whole feed is more bland than zero sugar oatmeal. Everyone's brimming with so much empathy. It's like I'm on that one really awkward team building event. There is zero discussion or flame wars. Everyone's a hero. No one's a villain. 90% 90% of posts come as 20 templates for everyone's going to make it, post daily, blah, 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 marketing, palitude. No drama or conflict. The world and everyone is doing nice. Damn it, we got to do something. Produce a villain or two like on Twitter. Otherwise, we'll turn this party into 20-year-old prom celebrations where you pretend to do fine, politely ignore everyone, and speak a word or two to forgotten friends. And that just got me. That just sent my mind down a whole, a whole thing because, like I said, for me this year, you know, I'm looking at the space that I'm playing it, and I'm like, yo, it's not good. <laughs> it's, it's not good. It, it's not doing well in the Caribbean. And more often than not, we're missing more than we are hitting. And we, can, and we know that we're missing more than we're hitting because we are constantly seeing companies talking about downsizing or companies, you know, are not e-commerce ready because they, they, they don't quite understand it. They don't quite believe it. When you're seeing uh, postings for digital marketers, or somebody in the e-commerce space or the digital strategy space, you know, they're packing in 10 rolls. Into, like, there's just so many examples that we aren't getting this space right, right? However, when you go on to, you know, a, a, platform, LinkedIn, like a platform like LinkedIn, just like Martin said, every, there's so much empathy. Everybody's doing great. There's only announcements. But the overall situation in in the space isn't doing good. And I'm sure that, you know, many of you probably listening in feel like that about your own space, right? But I'll I'll, I'll speak to, you know, my industry here in the Caribbean. And it's not doing good. The results, what we see, it's not doing good, right? And so this year I decided, okay, you know what? We're not speaking about a lot of these things. Nobody, nobody's even bringing up the conversation. Everybody is too afraid to even bring up the conversation. And then God forbid you disagree with people on social media because then it just, it it turns into a, it it turns into something completely different. And I, and I actually understand that because what I've realized I've started to do as well is I actually vet who I respond to. I know you guys do it. And if you guys don't do it consciously, you might be doing it subconsciously. But I vet who I, I vet who I respond to. I have no problem disagreeing or having that discussion, but I only 
I would only disagree with people after, you know, some, some type of vetting because I've realized that there are those people who only ever pop up out of the blue to disagree, degrade, downplay, insult, whatever, right? And if you're somebody that does that, and that, you know, that, that, that's how you get your rocks off. Hey, I mean, whatever floats your boat. But I would not respond. It doesn't even matter what you say. The point could be valid. And I, and I might even type out my response and just delete it just because it's you. <laughs> because all you ever do is pop up to disagree, downgrade, insult, or, or whatever. And, and then you realize that there, there, are, there's those pe- there are those people who just come out to oppose you. Right? They're not there for any... They're not there for a good discourse. They're just there to oppose you. Just because you said it, they're there to oppose you. So there's never no, there's, there's no way I'm going to have that discussion, right? So I would either just not respond or, again, if you're somebody where you're, you're popping up to only do that, I'm removing your comments. I don't even care to see it. It's my post, so whatever. I'll do what I want, right? But I say all that to say, that we need to start having these discussions about our spaces, the good, the bad, the ugly. We need to start having them publicly. And you want to start to do that because as I originally, the idea that I originally had for this, for this episode is that society forgets the people who play in the middle. Society forgets the people who play in the middle. If all you are doing is showing up every single day to agree and you're never putting out your personal opinion on these platforms to help good discourse within your space, you would never be remembered in your space. You would never be remembered in your space. And I'm starting to see that because, like I said, this year, I said, you know what? No holds barred. I'm going to come out, say what I have to say. And everything that I say, I know why I'm saying it. My intentions are good. My, I'm, I'm saying it not to put anybody down or put things down or whatever, but I'm going to call a spade a spade. If I see something wild, I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> If I see something good, I'm gonna talk about it, right? I've been I've been in my I've been in my lane doing my thing for six years and six years of creating content and educating and just pushing, pushing, doing what I can do to contribute to my space. You know, you get to a point where, you know, you you have a body of work, you have a name, you you are somebody who can say something, and when you say something, people will take notice. And it's so crazy because since I started to do, so I am, let me show you, let me show you how crazy this is, right? We're in May right now. So I think the first one I would have done would have, might, might have been in March. So, the, so I started to do, review the digital marketing jobs that have come up, all right? So I'm five videos in, right? I have done five videos of reviewing digital marketing job posts outside of the one where you know the one was um (laughs) secretary slash uh human resources (laughs) i don't i don't i don't want to do jobs that are not within my space because again listen people send me since i started that people have sent me well over two to three hundred jobs to review and talk about but i'm like man that, that it just it's just a slippery slope and I, can, I can't, if I'm not in your industry, I don't know what is good. I don't know what is bad. I'd have to interview people, but I'm not trying to go down that road, right? To me, that, that is a, a HR. That's somebody else's space. However, I would review digital marketing jobs or e-commerce jobs because I'm playing in that space, right? So I'm five videos in, and I did two videos on reviewing a bad campaign right or or a campaign where i felt like influencers could have been used better so we're at seven videos and when i mean that society forgets 
the people who ride the fence. I'm seven videos in where I'm talking about the bad in my space. And I'm seeing comments like, like I seen a comment on one of the videos and the person was like, oh yeah, this is all he ever talks about. His videos that come out where he's bashing company. Yeah, this is, this is all he ever does. And I'm like, this is all I ever do. And like, Again, I'm not hurt by it, but I'm just like, wow, like people really, again, people forget when you are riding the fence, when you're in the middle, right? People, it, it, it's easy to forget. It's easy to dismiss that. But there is something about, now I'm not a psychologist. I don't know what it is when it comes to tension and friction when you are not riding the fence and you're doubling down on your opinion about something, I don't know what the heck that is as to why that is so memorable. So when I seen that comment about, you know, that's all he ever talks about, I'm like, man, listen, seven, vi I have, I think on YouTube alone, I have 140 videos on YouTube alone. And YouTube is, is, isn't some, that's not even remotely my main platform. My main platform has been blogging for so long. And between blogging, between workshops, between live streams, between, you know, think about, you know, over the last six years, all of the different mediums that I have done. And I only have seven videos where they are negative, where they're speaking about, you know, some, some ills I'm seeing within my space. And somebody could really come out and say that that is all he ever talks about. And I just thought that was so interesting because I'm like, yo, that when you double down on your opinion and you're not riding the fence, you know, that stuff really does create an impact. And that really does create a lasting memory. Now that's not gonna that that that's not that's not me saying you know well shoot if that's the stuff that's working I'm gonna go in and double down on the negative no because <laughs> at the end of the day that 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 that's not that's not that's not me like I'm not going out looking for the controversy however you know when I see things that are 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 really bothering me or that could really be done differently or I want to talk about it then this year I'm giving myself permission to not play it safe. This year I'm giving myself permission to not be politically correct, to not ride the fence. I'm giving myself permission that year to say, you know what, hey, that's BS, we're going to talk about it. And I had to get to a place where whatever the backlash is, Whatever the criticisms are, I'm going to be okay with that. And so that, to me, has what has been, you know, one of the more interesting things that I've seen. Like I said, seven videos in where you're pointing out something within the space. And just seeing the reactions, you know, seeing the, some of the comments or whatever. But again, that one really stuck out. And then, there are, and then there are those where, you know, again, people are so dedicated to, to not liking you. They've just taken that and they've decided to, to run off on a tangent with that. <laughs> and you got to be, you got to be okay with that. Right? So this episode, I wanted to get you guys thinking about, are you playing it safe within your space? Now, I know not everybody can just jump out or, you know, no, I shouldn't say that. But most people feel like they cannot speak their mind. And that was not, that's another interesting thing. These past couple of weeks, you would not believe the amount of people. And I only wish... I only wish I could share who has reached out to say things to me. And I can't, I, I can't, 
you know, this this is one of those things where, you know, sometimes when people drop comments, I'd block out their names and reshare the comments. But in this instance, blocking out the names and resharing the comments doesn't work because I, w- I want you to see who. I want you to see the caliber of people who reach out to me to say things like, hey, just watched your video on the jobs. As a CEO, this has forced me to sit down with my team and rethink what we're doing. I've had a head of one of the largest companies in the Caribbean reach out to me and say, hey, we had a meeting and we were talking about new jobs and somebody in the meeting said, hey, they put their hand up and said, hey, we just posted a job for this position and honestly speaking, I don't think it is fully aligned. I think we're asking for too much. And I thought I would bring it up before we end up on that Karen Rose guy's videos and we're highlighted publicly. And they said, oh, well, if you feel like that, let's pull the job and let's go through it before it goes to that, <laughs> to that, to that, to that level. The Unilever stuff, I had one of the most respected names in this country reach out and said, hey, I can't say this publicly. However, every single thing you said is so true. And I agree with you 1,000%. And then we went into a long discourse about how it could be done and some of, the th- some of the things that need to change and whatnot. And this is somebody who is one of the head executives for one of the, <laughs> a very large conglomerate here. And they hire or book influencers all the time. Right? So, it, it, it doesn't have the impact if you don't know who and you don't know what position they hold and you don't know what company. It doesn't have the same impact. And I only wish I could share those conversations and just grab the screen grabs, show their name or show their company and show who they are and showcase the discourse and show, and show the discourse. But these are people who would have never have reached out if I wasn't willing to take the chance and really speak how I feel about my industry. So whatever space you are in, think about how you can not play it safe. The other thing I noticed was that the amount of people that reached out to said, hey, I wish I could do what you do. Not be a marketing, not be in, in marketing or e-commerce or, or whatever, but people are like, yo, I, I wish I could say what I want to say about my space, but I can't. I, I can't. And why can't they? Because society that we are in is too sensitive. Especially in the Caribbean, we're too sensitive. And I think one, I think, and I've, and I've had this conversation with, with one of my good friends where he was like, yo, I need you to be careful. <laughs> he's like, I need you. He's like, I need you to, I need you to be careful. They're going to come for you. I need you to, I need you to be careful. And we got into, we got into, you know, how are you able to, how are you able to, to say what you would say, what you want to say? And I think, in, in during our conversation, one of the things that has helped me is I'm a is I'm a bit removed from 
the social ties or I'm not, I'm not, what's the way to say this? One of the things for me is because I did not grow up in the Caribbean, like, a, like my first 28 years, I'm 35. My first 28 years are Canada. You know, I'm, I was born in Trinidad, but I left Trinidad when I was like two weeks old. So my whole life has been, has been in Toronto. Right. So in that, I'm removed from the, oh, I can't talk about this because I went to school with that person or, hey, that's my best friend's uncle. Like, I, I, I'm removed from that. So I'm looking at things just very objectively and I'm not beholden to, oh, I can't speak about something because that's so and so. Right. I didn't pitch marbles with anybody. So I'm going to talk about it. And the people that reach out to me that are like, yo, I wish I could do that. The majority of the people don't want to speak about certain things because, again, they're so close to the situation. They know the person who is, who is holding down in these roles or, you know, they're, 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 they're friends of, the, the, they're, they're friends of friends of people or, or this is their friend's family. Or it, it's just the six degrees of separation is so small. Everybody knows everybody. And everybody grew up with everybody. You know, so nobody in the business community wants to step on anybody's toes or mash anybody's corn. But I don't have that because I'm I'm just have no connection to anybody. I don't know nobody. I mean, I know people, but I don't know them. And I'm gonna speak again this year. I'm giving myself permission to speak on the space. I'm gonna call it how I see it, and I'm okay with being misunderstood or or even misquoted because i've realized that that is a that's a big thing too there are people that are just commenting on on things that i've said and they've never even watched a video they've never even heard the podcast they just heard someone of someone of someone say it read two comments and there and when i when i even hear the clip or when i watch a video of them of them recapping or speaking about things i've said i'm like wow you couldn't be so far from what I've said. And it's easy to get upset. It's easy to get tight. It's easy to feel like, oh my God, the world is crashing down on you. Let me go run back and hide under a rock. It's easy to get there. Listen, the cyberbullying is real. <laughs> The cyber bully, the cyber bully is real. Like I, the way I hear, the way I've heard some people speak about me is like I'm out here personally attacking people, and I'm like, wow, this is wild. I'm talking about business. I'm talking about strategies. I'm talking about companies. And the way some people are attacking me, people are attacking me personally. <laughs> And you got to be okay with that. But you know what? Not everybody is. To me, my, my back is broad. And a lot of the people that are, 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 are saying things about me, I've never heard of. You've heard of me. I've never heard of you. So it's, it's hard for me to be upset because at the end of the day, they don't, they don't know me. Right? But it's just very interesting for that overall thought about giving yourself that permission to not ride the fence in your space. And if you can figure out a way to put yourself out there, not ride the fence, and start to challenge your space. And I'm not talking about just making negative videos, but I'm, even when you guys are agreeing, you guys are agreeing, you know, it, it, it's it's it, you're still you're still tempering back your 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 agreeing, right? We gotta we gotta figure out a way to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in the business community in the Caribbean. Turn your camera on, make a video, speak about situations, help challenge your space to be better because we are failing at a lot of things and i could comfortably say we are failing because every single day you're hearing about a company downsizing 
company revenue not going the way that it's supposed to go. People complaining about jobs. And if they're complaining about jobs, it's because a lot of the times the companies are not doing good, so they got to downsize. So we got to really start to challenge our spaces. And we have some amazing minds throughout the entire Caribbean. But we're still holding back because people don't want to put themselves out there in that space to challenge their space, to make their space better. They're still holding back. They still want to be politically correct. So I challenge you, you know, take a deep look at yourself. You know, what are you trying to accomplish in this space? What are you are trying to accomplish in the space? For me, I'm at that stage in my life and in my in my career and in my in my business where I want to see companies do e-commerce, adopt digital and do digital marketing better. For me, every day I wake up, I'm 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 learning. I'm testing things out within my own business, looking at my own results better or worse, and teaching from that. Showcasing my behind the scenes. If you're on my Instagram, you know I share everything. I showcase everything on my Instagram stories. You know? So when I hear people, when I hear people, you know, come out and try to challenge me about what I've done and da-da-da-da, it's, it, it's hilarious to me because it's like, yo, there's, I don't know anybody I don't know anybody in the Caribbean who has showed their process more than me. And I'm not even I'm not even joking. I don't know anybody who has showed their behind the scenes and their process more than me. I'm always showing what I'm doing, how I'm doing, and if you're smart, you're taking notes of my stories. Even if I don't get a good result, or even if, you know, the, the results could be better, there's always lessons to be learned. I'd be watching my stories with notes. And I show my, and I show my stories a lot for two reasons, really. One, because I, I love when I record and I do stuff, and a year later, I get the notifications from Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive to say, hey, this is what you did last year. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's where I was at last year. That's where I was at two, three, four years ago. And I get to see my own growth. And then two, it's always amazing when, you know, people can come back to you and be like, yo, I remember when you were just doing this or when you were doing that. And they got to witness that growth and they could attest that you have put in the work. You didn't just quietly win the lotto or somebody's not quietly financing you and you know that's that's the reason you're still here nah people have seen my 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 work people have seen my behind the scenes work for years and so whenever i even remotely feel like i've seen a comment and i might get upset or i feel myself getting upset there's always a comment right around the corner. There's always, you know, three, four more comments that are talking about, yo, your growth is, is, is impeccable. You were here doing X, Y, and Z, and now look where you're at. And those things always balance out, you know, those, those comments that, 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 you know, make you feel some type of way. I seen a comment this weekend where, Again, but this is this is somebody. This is from a, this is a comment from somebody who has been my certified hater for years. <laughs> and they were like, "Yo, I, I I I would like to question. I would like to challenge his 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 status as an expert." And I'm like, "I have never once said I was an expert at anything. I'm just doing what I do. People see it." People come and ask me how I did it or if I can help them with that. And that's where, that's, that's how I've gotten here. I had my own business doing my own thing and people have asked me to help them with that. And that is how I'm here. I, have n- I don't ever say I'm an expert because I, 
to be an expert in e-commerce and marketing, that's crazy to me because it changes damn near every day. How could you be an expert at something that changes every single day? I say I'm a strategist. Heck, there are times where I even struggle to come up with a title because I'm like, man, everything sounds so, you know, elite, uh, the strategist, a coach. And I, and I personally still feel like a student. I feel like a, I feel like a, a, a digital strategist student <laughs> because every single day you're learning something and the thing is changing. And, be, and, I, and I guess the best thing, but it's not a sexy title, is I, I, feel, like I'm a, I feel like I'm a digital strategist practitioner. Who teaches? <laughs> you know? And in, in getting my own results, I can comfortably say, you know, hey, I've done this and this works. I've done that and that works. And when I hear some people's opinions who are only reading from, from books and they haven't done the work and I can see that they're not doing the work, right? I have an opinion that I can talk about it because I'm a practitioner and I'm in it every single day. So when I see the jobs and I'm like, that's wild. When I'm seeing them cram six specialties into a role and then wanting to pay you, Less than a thousand US a month. They want to pay you five, six thousand TT dollars a month, less than a thousand US a month. I'm like, that's insane. <laughs> that is wild. But who else is going to talk about it? Who else is going to talk about it? When I see companies misusing influencers, and influencers could be niching down and building their, their, their platforms in a way to get even more money. If nobody is going to say anything and tell them, yo, there's a different way to do this. If nobody's going to tell them, who, who's going to tell them that? I'm in this space. I don't even need, I don't even need the following that some of y'all have. I don't even need the following that some of y'all have to make more money. Let alone if you go and hit me with a, a, a 20,000, 30,000 on a platform. God, God help y'all. But I'm also not in the influencer space. I'm an influential person, you know, according to the public. <laughs> because when I speak, apparently people listen, right? So, again, I, I say all that to say that, you know, this is where, this is the conversation that I was having, you know, over, over my morning breakfast. You know, stop playing the fence. Take a deep look at yourself, whatever space you are in. You're putting out content, or maybe you're not putting out content. Maybe you want to say things about your space, good, bad, ugly, but for some reason you are holding back. I, I get it that you putting yourself out there might be scary, there might be repercussions, but it is high risk, high risk reward you are going to turn some people off you're going to turn some people off but who knows you might turn some people on giggity giggity <laughs> and you you not speaking your mind might be what is holding you back from the next level of where you are trying to go and you really got to think about that you holding back, you riding the fence, you being politically correct, not challenging your space, not putting your thoughts and opinions out on Front Street, good or bad, and only playing it safe and being politically correct, that may be what sets you apart and puts you in your own stratosphere. And that might be what's holding you back from getting to the next level. And it's not easy. Because trust and believe, a lot comes with it. Trust and believe, a lot comes with it. And you might feel like it's not worth it. But high risk, high reward. You might just be holding yourself back by playing in the middle, being politically correct. And so... You know, that's, that's really it for me today. This is kind of just, you know, me reflecting. This is kind of me, me reflecting. Being, you know, 
doing something and, and, and again, just kind of seeing the results come in, seeing what the comments are saying and seeing how, you know, people are either, people are either doubling down on the praise and people coming out and saying, yo, you, you've reached another level in my mind. And then you have those that, you know, turned all the way off. But remember, we're in business. You're always going to have your ideal clients. And you're going to have the people who want to do business with you. And then maybe there are those people who, you know, they just thought of you just of just another person in the space. And then you might do that one thing that they say, aha, that's the person I need to work with. And so double down on your thoughts, your processes, your strategies. Double down on it. Double down on it. That's all I'm saying. Stop playing it safe. Stop being politically politically correct. We have enough of that. We have enough of it. Figure out how you can go and start putting yourself out there, challenging your space, but do it in a way that helps, that, that, that helps grow the space. You know, even if people don't like how I've come across, and this is, this is and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up with this, right? There are people who have reached out to me and said, hey, you could say what you are saying without saying what you are saying. You know, you shouldn't call out people's names. You shouldn't, you know, you need to tone it down or you shouldn't have so much aggression or so much, so much energy or passion to what you are saying. You should tone it down. And I'm like, man, don't, well, for one, don't tell me to do what I do. That's for starters. Don't tell me to do what I do. I'm being authentic. This is me. You love me, you hate me, either or it's me, right? Secondly, don't tell me to do something that you're not doing. Are you putting yourself out there? Is your name on the line? No, then don't, don't tell me anything, right? But then, thirdly, the minute you start to tell me, don't say this, don't say that, don't, you know, put too much huh, into it, you know, tone it down, then guess what? I am now riding the fence. I'm now back in the middle. You are projecting your own insecurities onto me. And I'm back to riding the fence. And if I'm riding the fence, if I'm not saying, you know, the things that I want to say, then society doesn't remember Karen Rose. And he is just another person who is a quote unquote digital marketer. <laughs> I don't even consider myself a digital marketer, by the way. I'll just throw that out there. I do marketing activities, but I don't consider myself a digital marketer. I think I'm, I think I'm you know, getting into my own as an as a, as a online business strategist or digital strategist, but marketing, digital marketing is just a piece of what I do. But yeah, the minute I don't say what I say, the minute I don't say it how I say it, the minute I don't come across how I want to come across. Anything I've said, I'm fine with. Anything I've said, I'm fine with. And half the time, if I'm not fine with it, it's because I wanted to say more. <laughs> and I've just had to, con I've had to condense what I've said due to limits of, of you know, short form video or whatever the case is. But I've, I've, I'm usually fine with everything I've said. I might have just not said everything I wanted to say or added some additional context you know, where, where I felt like I could have added additional context. But the minute, I don't, the minute I don't do what I do, I'm back to playing in the middle. Think about that. If you have seen the seven videos, any one of the seven videos I've done where I'm reviewing a bad marketing job or I'm reviewing, you know, a, a bad campaign or whatever, the reason why that is stuck on some people's mind to the point where they, where they think that all I've ever done is bad, you know, reviewing bad jobs or bad, is because I'm speaking how I feel. And that has just stuck in their mind to the point where they think the last six years don't exist. And I've only done these seven videos. <laughs> right? So if I change it, I'm no longer being authentic. And if I'm not my authentic self, then I'm not felt. Right? And if I'm not felt, then I'm not going to be 
not going to be talked about. And I'm not saying I'm doing this to be talked about, but you get where I'm coming from. I'm doing this to build my business. I'm doing this to challenge what is happening for good and for uh, the good and the bad. And overall, guess what? The impact is felt because we're talking about things that nobody was ever talking about publicly. My goal has been achieved. All right. So, folks, that is episode number 73. I'd love to hear from the Digipreneur family. Have you struggled with speaking your mind and putting yourself out there to challenge your industry? Do you feel like you're unable to do that for a while, for any reason? I'd love to know I'd love to know if you are speaking out and challenging your space and if you are not speaking out and challenging your space and kind of playing it safe, I'd love to know why and I'd love to know, you know, what what do you feel like is holding you back? I'd love to know. You know, so whether that's via email or send me a DM or, you know, hit me on social media, I would love to know what the reason is. Because for me to even get to a place where I'm giving myself permission to 100% authentically be me, put myself out there, took a lot. It took a lot of inner work, mental development, and then just getting to the point of being fed up. (laughs) But all of those, I could be fed up. And not be at a place where I'm ready to, to say something and put myself out there. Right? So being fed up about your industry isn't enough. A lot of things have to align where you're just like, man, man, F it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to challenge this. And I'm okay with the blowback or whatever happens. I'm okay with that. It takes a lot to get there. So, you know, hit me up. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right? All right. So... If you are not currently following me on social media, you can follow me at Karen Rose on any social media platform. That is LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, right? Don't forget to check out the KarenRose.com website if you guys want more help on building your digital presence, monetizing your platforms. You guys can always follow me there. Informate my blogs, my videos, information on upcoming workshops, all those things are going to be on that website. You guys can also go check out the digipreneur.fm website. I did a nice little refresh over the weekend to, you know, clean it up and, you know, get me feeling good about the website again. Um, But you want to subscribe to the notification list or the email list on that website. That way you guys are always notified of any new events or upcoming episodes or when episodes drop, you'll be notified via uh, the push notification or the email. All right. So that is it from me today, folks. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Happy Monday. Put on a good smile. Do something good for the community. Something. But definitely make sure you guys reach out to me because this is a conversation that I'm very interested in having with you guys. All right? Offline. So that's it for me, everybody. Take care. You've been listening to the Digiboss, Karan Rose. We hope your notepad was filled after this episode. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. The learning doesn't stop, folks. And to make sure you don't miss any gems from the Digiboss, go over and follow him on all social media platforms at Karan Rose. Folks, don't just sit there with a notepad. We need you to implement at least one thing into your business before the next episode. That's the only way your business levels up. Thanks for listening to Digipreneur FM. Now, Go be great.